Scudera Ferrari has finally won a Grand Prix after Australia, and it was not the same driver who won it twice before for the team this season. Carlos Sainz got the job done this time and won his career's first ever Grand Prix despite not operating smoothly and having clashes with his teammate Charles Leclerc, who is continuously being bogged down by his team's strategic errors, making his championship contention almost impossible. The British Grand Prix was spectacular from the first minute to the last. Just as the race started, a horrific accident involving multiple cars trying to get ahead ended up sending Joe Guanyu of Alfa Romeo flying into the barricade. Thanks to the halo, he did not sustain any injuries and was declared fit after a checkup. After this dramatic start to the race, drivers were allowed to start again from their qualifying positions which was a blessing in disguise for Ferrari, as Carlos Sainz, who started the race from pole position, quickly lost to Max Verstappen first time around. The race restart went amazingly well for Ferrari, and Carlos Sainz did not allow Max Verstappen to get ahead of him for quite some time. However, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz engaged in the battle for the top spot, costing Charles Leclerc his top position. Who is to blame for Charles Leclerc's drop from the top to the fourth spot in the race, and whether he would be able to close the massive gap between him and Max Verstappen in the driver's standing? Let's dive straight into the video to find out. Many things went wrong for Charles Leclerc in the race. From the contact with Sergio Perez on the first lap, which sent a part of his front wing flying, to the decision of not pitting after the virtual safety car. Charles Leclerc quickly lost his first place and even failed to make it to the podium in the end. After the restart, Sainz got hold of the first position and kept an intense battle with Max Verstappen, which did not allow him to get ahead. Meanwhile, on lap 6, Charles Leclerc had contact with Sergio Perez, which compromised both drivers' cars. Sergio Perez had to pit early to fix the damage caused by the contact while Charles Leclerc kept on racing with his damaged car. The damage did not seem to have affected his car much as he took over third place from Perez. The first turn of events took place when Carlos Sainz lost balance of his car on lap 10 and went off track, allowing Max to take the lead in the race, and he did just that. Unfortunately for Red Bull, Max ran over something which damaged the bottom of the car, and he started to lose places to Ferrari drivers. Then, the battle between Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz began for the top spot, as both drivers were hungry to win the race. At first, Carlos Sainz listened to his team orders and allowed Charles to get ahead of him on lap 31, because clearly, Charles was the faster of the two at the time. Just as everything was looking smooth for him, the team's strategy blunder cost him not only the top spot, but also the podium finish. Esteban Ocon suddenly lost the power on lap 39, which introduced the virtual safety car, allowing many drivers to pit and change their tyres. It was difficult to comprehend Ferrari's strategy, as they decided to get Sainz to pit and change his tyres to soft and keep Charles on hard tyres. That was the undoing of Charles. He was trying his absolute best to compete with the other drivers who had fresh, soft tyres but despite giving it his all, he stumbled down the grid. First was his battle with his teammate, which pushed him off the track, and then onwards he was overtaken by Sergio Perez and Lewis Hamilton. It is not the first time that a team's decision has ended him, costing him the top spot. His team's decision cost him the race in Monaco, and now it has happened once again in Silverstone. It is definitely frustrating for him to go through all this despite giving his best and he showed his disappointment while talking to the media after the race and he said, The last part from safety car onwards, before that we were extremely quick. Just the first lap, I thought it was over. And all was looking good for victory, but with the safety car at the end, we decided to leave the lead car and to pit the trial car. And it didn't pay off for me. It's a big disappointment. On the other hand, it is great for Carlos, obviously. It's a dream come true for him. But obviously, I cannot hide my disappointment too on the race. It is frustrating. When asked what he makes of his team's decision, he replied, I think until you actually get all full details, if one's decision, it is very difficult to comment. I was just trying to do the best and to try and keep the cars behind. 
but obviously on a new soft and a used hard, it's quite a bit different. But I had done to try and keep the positions, and I don't think I could have done much better there, so I'll just analyse it with the team to understand if there was anything better that we could have done. There is obviously a lot the team could have done better, and he would have made his stance clear on many things. The Monaco episode and now this, it just cannot continue like this. The team hardly seems to have fixed its reliability issues, and now they are continuously making strategic mistakes, costing Charles Leclerc the chance to even come close to Max Verstappen in the championship. Ferrari's boss Mattia Binotto commented on the talk he had with Charles after the race when speaking with Sky Sports. He said, It was simply to tell him, I understand your disappointment, but you did a fantastic race today. He was fighting at the start and fighting later on when he was not on the sauce. The way he was driving there, protecting the position, was amazing. So being happy is difficult, but staying calm and positive is important. Engine issues and strategic blunders have already changed the points table completely for Charles Leclerc. He lost his lead after the Spanish Grand Prix and is now trailing behind Max by 43 points. When he was asked about his chances in the championship before the race, he said, In the last four, five races, it became much more difficult, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. I still believe in it as much as I believed five races ago. It's going to be more difficult, but anything is possible. Indeed, it is getting more and more difficult for him, and his bad luck has continued. The next race is within a week in Austria, and the team should come up with a good strategy to be proactive in taking decisions and capitalising on the mistakes of other teams. Carlos Sainz is also driving well, and would look to continue his brilliant form. The same scenario could appear again in the next races, and the teams need to have a good idea on what to do in what scenario, because in the fight for the top spot, the two drivers ended up giving openings for other drivers. The good news is that both drivers did not have any reliability issues, which have haunted the team for a long time, and the car could compete and give a tough time to Red Bull. And Ferrari is not the only team dealing with clashes between drivers on the same team. Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen are also in the mix, as Sergio Perez is now in the second position in the championship with a difference of only 34 points, and the way he drove his RB18 from down the grid to P2 suggests that he is going to be very close to Max Verstappen in the upcoming races. But the thing about Red Bull is they have managed the conflict between their drivers very well. Will Ferrari be able to manage the back and forth between Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz in races and stop making strategic mistakes? That's it for today. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.